Welcome to Beyond the Horizon podcast, a show all about the Horizon ecosystem and the exciting world of blockchain and Web3. Join us as we explore the latest happenings in this rapidly evolving space and discover new horizons together. Now let's go Beyond the Horizon. Hey everyone, today we're joined by Corey, co-founder and CEO of Stably, a stable coin as a service project that is going to be joining Eon. Before we get into any questions about your project, Corey, could you maybe go through a bit of an introduction for yourself to the Horizon community? Yeah, absolutely. Well, thanks so much for having me on the show today, Erica. And uh, yeah, I'm Corey. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Stably. I guess uh, just a little bit of background by myself. Um, I'm a first-generation immigrant from Vietnam. Uh, my family was sponsored by my grandfather, who was a combat radioman of the uh, South Vietnamese Army. Uh, Grandpa actually went to a re-education camp for like 10 years after the Vietnam War. But afterward, the U.S. government uh, sponsored his family to immigrate to America in the late 1980s. And then he then sponsored my uh, family to immigrate to. And uh, we settled in Kent, Washington, which is uh, south of Seattle in 2004. Shout out to all the homies and everybody from Eastside Kent 253. If you don't know about us, now at least you know about me. <laughs> Holla. All right. Well. Anyway, uh, so yeah, I grew up, went to school, and been living in, here in Kent, uh, Renton, Kent area, south of Seattle ever since. Also started attending the University of Washington Bothell in uh, 2012. And, um, you know, in 2013, during my college days, right, this was, uh, I started working as a bank teller at Bank of America. That was my first major exposure to the world of finance and banking. Also, my first time buying Bitcoin back in 2013. Also, my first crypto bull market. Actually, borrow a lot of money from my family to ape into Bitcoin. Uh, and then in 2014, that was also my first crypto bear market. Lost a lot of money and faith in crypto that year. Actually, sold all my Bitcoin, which in hindsight was a terrible decision. But um, you know, that year I started focusing more on traditional uh, financial markets and investing instead of uh, you know just 100% crypto and penny stocks. <laughs> um, I had a summer internship uh, in 2014 at Merrill Lynch, and that's where I met my uh, current uh, CFO, Ivan, actually. Uh, in 2015, I graduated from the University of Washington with a bachelor's degree in finance and marketing, started working as a personal banker at Bank of America, also pick up coding on the side to uh, start building trading algorithms. Uh, I actually contributed a lot of trading algos and strategies on Quantopian, uh, which was a, a, a op an open source um, quantitative trading uh, platform that is actually now defunct. Um, in 2016, I left Bank of America to join a, a, a local RIA or registered investment advisory firm, got my Series 65 and uh, started working as a market research and sales analyst. I also started uh, hosting local meetups to talk about algo trading. And that's where I met my uh, current co-founder and CTO, David. We became really good friends. And uh, David, you know, me and David, we started sharing trading algos with each other. Uh, we were mainly trading VIX derivatives, uh, meaning we were, you know, market timing VIX and inverse VIX ETFs, uh, making something like 50% annually uh, net of hedging costs. Um, for those who don't know what a VIX derivative is, you know, you've probably heard of the S&P 500 index. Well, there's options on the S&P 500 index, which, you know, uh, these options has implied volatility calculations. And then, you know, there are futures contracts with these uh, implied volatility. And then they further package these futures contract into uh, exchange traded funds or ETF. And that's what David and I were trading. Sounds a lot like Pixie does, right? Well, probably is. So anyway, uh, in 2017, uh, I left the, uh, uh, the RIA uh, to start uh, to join PitchBook in Seattle as a private equity data analyst. Uh, David and I, during this moment, he, he was working uh, at Amazon as a software engineer, also in Seattle. Uh, we noticed that our VIX uh, trading algorithms, for some reason, work really well for Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Litecoin. Probably because, you know, crypto pixie dust as well, right? And um, yeah, we started applying the uh, algos to trade crypto. And I was right in time for my second crypto bull market. You know, the rest was history. In 2017, everything went up. I don't think it was my crypto. Everything just literally went up. Uh, I mean, my algos, right? Everything just went up that year. Made a decent amount of money and um, actually decided to leave PitchBook 
uh, at the end of that year because I, I wanted, you know, I pitched them to start a crypto research division within PitchBook and they didn't, you know, they didn't take that idea too seriously. So I decided to just leave and do my own thing. Well, that year, you know, while we were trading, David and I, we noticed that there were no other stable coins other than Tether. And, you know, Tether had a lot of, um, you know, uh, rumors and conspiracy around it. So, we, you know, the light bulb went off in our head and we decided to just, you know, go out and start our own stablecoin project. So, uh, yeah, so we left my job. David also left his job at Amazon um, and he was making way more money than I was at Amazon, too. And uh, in 2018, we raised our first uh, $500,000 seed round in April from venture capitalists to uh, and found a stably. It took about eight months for us to develop and launch our first stablecoin called USDS. It's a Ethereum-based uh, US dollar, US dollar-backed stablecoin, and we did that in partnership with Prime Trust, a Nevada uh, regulated trust company. Uh, we'll talk more about Prime Trust in a little bit here. Uh, and yeah, we we listed USDS on Bittrex in December of 2018. So everything was great. Um, in early 2019, in uh, January, uh, CZ's team reached out to us and decided, you know, that they're going to let us list USDS as the fifth stablecoin on Binance. And um, they actually let us list it in uh, February of 2019 on Chinese New Year, actually. Um, so, you know, that was really great, right? We raised the second seed round for about $1.2 million and managed to mobilize over $7 million in market cap to, to get USDS listed on Binance. And we, you know, a lot of that money came from our own investors and partners. However, in 2019, when, after we got, uh, you know, listed on Binance, we got sucked into the stablecoin wars versus uh, USDT from Tether, USDC from Circle, PAX from Paxos, TUSD from uh, Trust Token, and uh, GUSD from Gemini. You know, these companies, they raise way more funding than we did. They raised hundreds of millions of dollars more uh, funding, uh, more in funding than Stably. And they even gave out discounts to market makers, which we couldn't really afford to do so. So yeah, we were not doing so well against them on uh, on Binance. And we lost a lot of market cap that year. It's similar to how USDT is taking a lot of market cap away from uh, USDC right now. So in 2020, we decided to delist USDS from Binance to stop bleeding so much cash. I think we were paying like 30 or 40 grand a month to market makers and, um, you know, paying interest and loan just to maintain, you know, our present on Binance, which is, you know, not sustainable. Um, so after we delisted from Binance, we raised another million dollar uh, in seed funding and pivoted our business model to stablecoin as a service, thanks to uh, inspiration from Mark Zuckerberg. If you recall, uh, they, you know, Facebook trying to launch its own stablecoin called Libra back in uh, 2019, though that you know didn't play out too well. However, we quickly found product market fit uh, with emerging blockchain networks that had no stablecoin infrastructure. So you know that was the uh, most ideal uh, target clientele for stablecoin as a service, right? And yeah, for since ever since then, from 2020 to 2022, stablecoin as a service took off. Uh, we've been generating about one and a half million dollar in revenue annually uh, from stablecoin as a service ever since. We have either expanded USDS or white label USDS onto more than 10 different blockchain networks, including Ripple, uh, VeChain, Stellar, Tezos, Harmony, and Chia Network, to name a few. Uh, we also launched Stably Ramp in early 2022. That's our very own fiat on and off ramp solution. Uh, Stably Ramp is an embeddable. Uh, application that enables users of Web3 wallets and applications to easily buy, sell, or swap digital assets with stable coins and traditional payment methods like bank transfers and cards. Uh, we can also onboard users from 170 plus countries and re regions worldwide. Uh, Stably has managed to generate more than $100 million in total on and off ramp volume uh, in the last two years as a result. Uh, fast forward to uh, this year in 2023, amidst the uh, you know crypto bear market, right? Well, fortunately, at the end of 2021 uh, and early 2022, right before the, the you know bear market uh, came on, we raised another $5 million in pre-Series A funding with participation from uh, some major name like VeChain and Cream Labs and uh, Morgan Creek Capital as well. So that really saved our butt, right? We managed to extend our runway significantly and, you know, be, been able to just focus on building and, you know, surviving this bear market. Uh, Unlike a lot of other companies that, you know, 
uh, in this space that just hasn't done so well. So, uh, but this year in 2023, we actually had an incident with our regulate custodian prime trust. And that happened in June of this year. The TLDR is it came to light that Prime Trust had mismanaged customer funds and lost tens of millions of dollars. Consequently, they were put into receivership by Nevada regulators, and they're going through a Chapter 11 bankruptcy process right now. Um, needless to say, we're you know we were incredibly shocked and disappointed that this happened to a you know a fully regulated custodian that was supposed to segregate customer funds from their own funds, right? And Oops, sorry. And um, yeah, we, uh, you know, many of our users, they did manage to redeem and withdraw their funds from Prime Trust before it collapsed. But, you know, we still have about 2 million of customer funds sitting there. Uh, Stably is actually serving as a member on the Prime Trust Creditors Committee at the moment. And we're working tirelessly with the committee, its counsel, and, and the court to return funds to our customers. And yeah, um, you can follow uh, us for more updates on this on our Twitter as well. Even though this was a very fortunate event that took place, you know, we're now trying to move forward with the new U.S. regulated partner called Bridge, uh, Bridge.xyz. They are a fiat and stablecoin uh, orchestration API provider, as well as a registered money service business, or MSB, similar to Circle. All their team members are ex-Coinbase employees, by the way. Uh, we have also obtained uh, an MSB registration and set up our own statutory trust in Wyoming to safeguard customer funds going forward. You can surely understand why we decided to take matters into our own, our own hands this time uh, instead of relying on another trust company or custodian, right? So anyway, we have finished integrating with uh, Bridge uh, this month and we're, we have also relaunched Stavey Ramp this month. We'll be adding more features to Stavey Ramp from now until the end of the year to get back to where we were before the uh, Prime Trust collapsed. Uh, we're also relaunching our stablecoin on various blockchain networks, as well as launching stablecoins for new clients next month, including the uh, Horizon Eon network. So yeah, we're, we're super excited to work with Horizon on this initiative and really looking forward to providing a superior stablecoin and on and off ramp infrastructure for your ecosystem. And we're very excited to have you join us as well. Uh, thank you so much for that introduction, Corey. Uh, it was very, very uh, in depth. So I'm sure that the community will end up having a lot of questions for you guys after watching this interview. Um, so with that being said, I know you kind of went into pretty good detail about what Stably is and the service that you provide. Could you maybe tell us more about the differentiators of your product and, and of Stably? Yeah, absolutely. So in a nutshell, you know, Stably, we provide stablecoin as a service to emerging blockchain, financial institutions, and enterprises. Uh, we also provide a plug and play on an off ramp widget for Web3 wallets and applications, as I mentioned earlier, uh, which enables their user to easily buy, sell, or swap digital assets with stablecoins and fiat payment methods. I guess our uh, major differentiators are uh, for stablecoin, you know, we focus on emerging blockchain networks where there are no existing uh, stablecoin infrastructure. Additionally, unlike other major stablecoin issuers, we like to ref share with our stablecoin as a service client in order to in order to promote further development and growth of their ecosystem. And this is the exact same thing that we will be doing with the Horizon team. Uh, as for on and off ramp, unlike other competitors, we prefer to source liquidity for stable ramp directly from decentralized exchanges and uh, DeFi aggregators instead of centralized exchanges like you know Binance or Coinbase or something like that. Um, as a result, we will be able to offer a much wider range of supported assets and networks while directing more volume and activity back to the blockchains themselves instead of just leaving that on the uh, central exchanges, right? Um, and this can oftentimes result in better fees and rates to the end users as well. Feel free to let me know if you have any questions about that. Yeah, absolutely. I think that given all of the details that um, will be really important to our community once we go live, it would be great to have you guys back on to answer some of the questions that I know we'll be getting about uh, this product as well as Stably. Uh, so I look forward to having you join us again, hopefully in the near future to discuss all of these details and all of those questions that we get. Um, the next question, I know this is Probably a little early to say, but once it's launched, how would someone go about getting the stable coin that you guys launch on Eon? 
Yeah, absolutely. So users will be able to mint and redeem the uh, Horizon Eon stablecoin via Stably Ramp. So you can go to uh, ramp.stably.io or stably.io slash ramp works as well. Um, initially, users can mint with USDC, uh, ACH push, bank transfer, or credit and debit cards. Uh, users can also redeem via USDC or ACH transfer. Um, from now until the end of the year, we'll we'll be adding more uh, payment methods like uh, USDT, uh, ACH pull, and also instant ACH pull. And um, also, I must uh, highlight that in order to access the Stably Ramp platform, users do need to be uh, KYC verified. So we support um, you know user onboarding in uh, globally in 170 plus countries and regions, as well as uh, 13 U.S. states. Okay, perfect. That is great to know. Um, are the users able to kind of see which areas of the globe are supported for this KYC on your website? Yeah, absolutely. You can visit uh, support.stably.io and we have a full, uh, full list of all the regions that we support on there. Amazing. Great. Uh, okay, so it sounds like you guys do have a lot going on right now. And I know that you recently overcame quite a bit. Um, so it's really impressive to see the drive that your team really shows. And we're definitely looking forward to working with a team that has as much drive and willpower as you guys have shown it, especially in this last year. Could you maybe go into a little bit about what the Stably Roadmap is going to look like maybe for the next quarter? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, we're um, we're just going to do what we do best, right? Launching stable coins for our clients on emerging blockchain networks, including Horizon Eon, uh, adding more features and support uh, and support more assets uh, on Stably Ramp, uh, integrating Stably Ramp with more Web3 partners like wallets, DeFi applications, uh, and expanding our global coverage to support more local payment methods. We're really looking forward to adding, you know, more payment methods, just such as uh, local bank transfer or even uh, Apple Pay, Google Pay, and even PayPal in the near future. Oh, incredible. I, I know that's something that I myself will definitely be looking forward to. I love a simple checkout process. Um, fantastic. So that being said, um, I know that we are really super excited to work with you guys, but why did you choose to work with Horizon and build on Eon? Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, it's our mission to bring a uh, stable coin and on and off ramp infrastructure to as many innovative uh, emerging blockchain ecosystem as we can. And Horizon Eon strikes us as a very ideal platform for this because uh, one is a fully EVM compatible side chain and smart contract platform that's built with massive uh, scalability in mind. It's also very uh, scalable and easily integrated with Ethereum based uh, decentralized application. Also very user friendly and has a streamlined deployment process. Actually, only took us about uh, less than two months to build and uh, deploy the uh, stablecoin on Eon. And also, uh, you know, zk Snart enable uh, permissionless cross chain communication protocol, which eventually will make uh, cross chain stablecoin transfer uh, possible. And uh, you know, I'm sure people will want to be able to bring stablecoin liquidity from one chain to another EVM compatible chain uh, in the near future. Uh, once we launch on uh, the, the stable coin on Eon. Amazing. Well, we are almost at the end of our interview today, but I wanted to ask if there was anything else that you wanted to share with the Horizon community. Yeah. So I guess uh, just going in a little more um, details on the stable coin itself, um, the Horizon Eon stable coin that we'll be launching soon is fully back one-to-one uh, -one with bank deposit, uh, money market instruments such as short dated U.S. Treasury bills, and USDC. Um, and, you know, we're holding U USDC as part of collateral as well because it enables um, e uh, easier minting and redemption for users if they choose USDC as the method. Um, collateral assets are held bankruptcy remote by our Wyoming tr uh, statu statutory trust entity. And the stablecoin itself will be issued by our MSB register entity under um, FinCEN convertible virtual currency guidance. Uh, FinCEN being the uh, Financial Crime Enforcement Network of the U.S. Treasury Department, and the specific guidance that we are um, uh, that we are employing to issue the stablecoin under is called um, FIN-2019-G001. I'm the interim Chief Compliance Officer, so, so that I gotta make sure I get all these points across. 
Uh, we'll also have monthly, monthly attestation performed by uh, an independent attestor called the network form uh, to verify that e every stablecoin in circulation is back one to one with collateral. Um, and with that said, you know, I, uh, Rob Viglioni, right? I've personally met and known Rob since 2018. And we have been talking about stablecoin collaboration for a very long time. So it's great to finally make it a reality. And I can't wait to uh, continue working together with him and the Horizon team, as well as the uh, Horizon Eon ecosystem. Amazing. That is definitely a long time coming. Uh, 2018 is pretty close to the initial launch of Horizon itself. So I'm glad that we're finally reconnecting and making a partnership happen with Stably, um, as well as definitely your very clear passion for making sure that everything is done in a very compliant manner, which is something that's very near and dear to our hearts. Corey, thank you so much for joining us today. It's been a pleasure having you on, and I look forward to having you on again to talk more about the launch of a stable coin on the Eon Network. Yeah, you as well. Thank you so much, Erica, for inviting me. Thank you for joining us on Beyond the Horizon. Stay tuned for more exciting episodes as we continue to discover the limitless potential of the Horizon ecosystem. If you liked this episode, make sure to subscribe and leave a thumbs up. Thank you, and we'll see you again next time.